Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. Belmont's got a new fire chief, and today I have with me David DiStefano, the new fire chief for the town. Chief, thanks for joining us. Uh, you joined the uh, Belmont Fire Department on March 15th. Has the first four weeks, have the first four weeks been what you expected? Well, first of all, Roger, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and speak with you and uh, speak directly to the people of Belmont. And uh, yes, uh, the first four weeks uh, have been uh, enjoyable. They've been uh, very busy, as you might imagine, uh, meeting a lot of people, uh, taking a lot of meetings with different uh, folks uh, in and outside uh, town departments and town government, <clears throat> people in the community uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, so it's it's been uh, a little bit of a whirlwind uh, four weeks, but uh, very enjoyable and uh, very interesting, challenging, and uh, and fun as well. Now you come to uh, Belmont from North Providence, and when it, you were at North Providence, uh, you did a lot of work nationally, uh, as I understand. Can can you tell us uh, how and why you think that national work will benefit the? Uh, the community of Belmont as well? I, I did, Roger. Uh, I've worked on a number of committees and, and still do sit on a, a committee for um, <clears throat> uh, IFSTOR, the International Fire Service Training Associates, uh, which is the, 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 the largest group that um, writes and validates uh, training material for the fire service basically throughout the world, but uh, specifically for North America. Um, and that experience, as well as other experiences that I've had um, presenting on the national level and writing for various um, trade service publications, I think those experiences uh, and, and that network of connections with people nationwide will help me help Belmont um, by thinking out of the box, so to speak. Uh, it, it's, it's great to have uh, experiences and, and knowledge in, in one area or one geographical area, but it's nice to also have not only the knowledge, but the network and the capability to see what folks outside of not only a town, but outside of your region and uh, you know across the country are doing uh, and may have some similar problems and circumstances and how they, how they deal with those. Uh, when you came to Belmont, you talked a lot about setting goals for mm -hmm. the Belmont Fire Department. Uh, can you tell us what goals you would like to see Belmont pursue? And, and as an extension, how do you measure those goals and determine whether you're reaching them? Oh. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, we've talked quite a bit about that recently uh, here in staff meetings and uh, with small groups that I've put together uh, here at headquarters uh, of various members of the department, different divisions and ranks within the department. And we're working on uh, some initiatives to help uh, help us quantify uh, our progress uh, on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, et cetera. Uh, we, we're at the very beginnings of that. Uh, I hope to put together some um, uh, some ways to measure our, our service, some ways to measure the job that we're doing for the community uh, internally, and then to reach out externally uh, and talk to some of our external stakeholders in the community uh, and see what they think about uh, some of this and, and get their input. Uh, and from that, um, I'd like to generate in, in simplest terms, a report card for us uh, that we'd follow uh, throughout the year. Um, we'd um, measure our progress uh, internally, uh, the folks outside of the fire department, the general public, uh, town officials and leaders uh, could measure our progress as well. Um, and I think what we're going to find is that we're, we're doing an excellent job with limited resources, and there may be areas that we could tweak, there may be areas that we could apply additional resources or apply our resources differently to, uh, to help improve uh, the department's performance uh, in, in many different areas. Uh, we work very, very heavily in public education. And uh, of course, not for the past year, unfortunately, with the pandemic, that's been pretty limited. But moving forward, hopefully, as we transition out of our pandemic uh, era, uh, we'll get back into the business of public education more robustly. Uh, I've worked with a couple of folks internally here uh, to start ramping up. Uh, hopefully, with the downside of the pandemic, we can uh, start bringing up uh, some public education opportunities proportionally. Uh, as well as some other uh, things that we work on internally here to provide service. When people think about a fire department, 
Uh, that's perhaps a, a misnomer nowadays. I've heard you talk about the the core missions or the core services uh, of a fire department, only one of which is responding to fires. Can right. can you talk about the the three core services you believe that the the fire department delivers to a community? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, our name is the fire department, and that's certainly our tradition. Uh, and certainly where, where we began in service delivery uh, 100 plus years ago, uh, our mission has evolved uh, dramatically uh, throughout that 100 or 100 and some odd year period uh, and probably evolved uh, most rapidly within the past 30 years or so. Uh, maybe 40 years now, uh, you know, with the introduction of fire-based EMS, which is really the most efficient, uh, best way to deliver EMS services uh, through your local fire department. Um, we have the knowledge, we have the personnel, we have the response times uh, uh, and the expertise to do the job. Um, that's been a core mission of the fire service for a number of years now. Uh, we've transitioned into many other things, uh, hazardous material mitigation, um, public education and safety in all aspects, not just from um, the dangers of fire. Uh, we really uh, have, <clears throat> excuse me, positioned ourselves or are positioning ourselves, excuse me, uh, as an oil hazard agency. Uh, and I think everyone within the community recognizes the fire and EMS role, but they also recognize the fact that when they pick up the phone and call the fire department, they call 911, they reach the fire department, uh, they know they're going to get help. They're going to get a response, uh, whether they have uh, water in their basement or whether someone in the family has a medical emergency. Uh, we're going to respond. Um, we have tools, we have uh, expertise, uh, and we have equipment uh, that can handle a wide variety of jobs. And I think people understand that uh, and, and do call us for the myriad of, of jobs throughout the community. You obviously have come to Belmont, uh, and shortly after you got here, the, the community voted no on a proposed override. Uh, uh, how do you react, not politically, but how do you as a department respond to that no uh, vote? Well, we have to move on. We have to provide service uh, on a daily basis as we always have and we always will. Uh, we'll pick up the pieces that we have left and we'll do the best we can uh, with what, we, what we're provided with for funding and uh, for budgetary constraints. Uh, there was a budget prepared uh, prior to my arrival here, actually two budgets prior to my arrival, one with the override passing and one with the override failing. So clearly we at least know where we stand at this point. Um, we're going to do the very best we can to provide the very best service possible within the constraints of our budget. I'd like to give the, uh, our viewership an opportunity to see the person behind the professional, uh, if you would. Um, you've moved to Belmont. Uh, you've been a firefighter your entire career. How does it feel to move to a new community and, in essence, start all over, start anew again? But it, it, it's interesting. It's, it's challenging. Uh, it's um... It, it's a great experience. Uh, it, it's because I, I'm I am starting over again in a new position, as as you said. Um, so I am the new fire chief in Belmont, but I'm not the new fire chief. Uh, you know, many things are the same uh, in the fire service, almost universally, uh, and and you know those can be uh, transportable. Uh, you can take those those skills and that knowledge wherever you go. Now, that being said, there, there certainly are things that are different in Belmont uh, that are unique to Belmont. Uh, and those are the things that I'm learning. And, and those are the things that I'm really finding uh, honestly interesting and enjoyable. Um, certainly there, there are challenges like there would be with any new job, um, but uh, it, it has been uh, an enjoyable time. And firefighting is in your family, uh, correct? You, you had an uncle that uh, was a firefighter for decades. That, that's correct, yes. My, uh, my uncle um, was a firefighter in the city of Providence for about 30 years, a little over 30 years, I believe. So uh, I, I do have a lot of memories of uh, stopping by to see him in the firehouse from, you know, as long as, as, as young as I can remember up until uh, I actually became a firefighter. So uh, he, he, he retired, uh, oh, in the, the mid nineties. So I had been on the job for a few years when he retired. So we were actually firefighters uh, at the same time there for a while. <laughs> Well, welcome to Belmont, Chief. Thank uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.
You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.